OpenAI just released three huge announcements at their annual dev conference, Agent Kit, Chat Kit, and Agent Builder, a fully native AI agent builder, a lot like N8N, right inside the OpenAI platform. In this video, we're gonna walk through all three big announcements, why you should care, some of the big advantages of these, and some of the limitations as of today, because it's not all roses out there. Hey, I'm Craig Hewitt. Welcome back to 100 Days of AI. Let's dive into the first announcement by OpenAI, which is Agent Kit. So walking through the blog post here, Agent Kit announced at their big dev conference in San Francisco today, the big one is the Agent Builder, a visual canvas for creating and versioning multi-agent workflows. We're gonna walk through this. We're gonna build an agent from scratch here in just a minute, but I wanna walk through these announcements first. So hang with me for just a second. So they've had uh, responses API and agents SDK since March and seen developers and big companies building a lot of really impressive things. And they dropped some huge names like Canva and HubSpot and the big, huge companies that have built AI agents directly in the OpenAI platform with these SDKs and this kind of developer first language. But now they're bringing a canvas, like a visual workflow builder like this to this world. Okay, so back to the announcement. You're able to build uh, workflows in a kind of visual way, like you're familiar with, with Lindy or N8N. We're gonna get to building one in just a minute and the handful of nodes and MCP servers that they already have natively built in. Um, and they talk about kind of some of the experiences with things. This is where it gets really interesting though, because you can go build an agent and that's cool and like that's really helpful, but like how does that agent run and how does it get input from people where they're solving this with chat kit, which is a way for you to deploy and embed chat UI inside your website, inside your application. So instead of having to kind of natively build all these toolings in, you can use chat kit to deploy an agent inside your application. Pretty incredible, right? So if we go to the chat kit documentation, it talks about embedding it in, on the front end or an advanced integration. I'll link this in the description below, but this is a pretty big deal. If you've ever worked with something like Stripe, I think there's a really strong analogy here where Stripe took the concept of payment processors and made it really available and attainable to anyone who can develop software. I think OpenAI is doing the same thing here with chat kit, which is an easy way for you to build an agent inside the agent builder platform here, and then embed the kind of front end input functionality of that into your piece of software. So you don't have to build the whole thing, you build the agent and the workflow builder, and then just embed the front end kind of input to it in your software. Pretty cool, huh? So um, it says create an agent workflow, set up chat kit in your product, it gives you the documentations here, and then the server, install a couple of packages, and you're ready to go. Pretty straightforward, right? I'm not a developer. I guarantee you I could feed this into Claude Code or Cursor or even uh, something like Replit, and it could probably do this in just a few minutes. Pretty cool. A lot of documentation here and a couple of examples of how they're using ChatKit in the real world. Okay, so enough of that. Let's build some AI agents. So I've got one built already, but we're going to start from scratch. I want to start from scratch because I want to walk through each of the elements and the nodes inside the uh, workflow builder here in Agent Builder. Okay, so we'll go to create, and you see on the left-hand side, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, different uh, elements, right? So there's the agent one, pretty self-explanatory. We have an agent here already populated, and if we pull this up, we can see kind of what this is all about. So it has a name, you can give it a description. Surely you would give it a better, <laughs> a better system prompt than this. You can call whichever kind of model you want here. Uh, reasoning, effort, different tools. So this is really cool. So you can give, uh, we talked about the three things that uh, an agent has, which is uh, model, tools, and memory, right? Um, and so tools, you can give it like a client tool, like the front end or website, uh, MCP server, file search, web browsing, uh, code interpreter, uh, a function, or something custom. Okay, cool. Um, output, you can output things as JSON, as regular plain text, or you can do a widget from ChatKit, and we'll walk through what that is and how to build one in just a second as well. Okay, cool. Uh, going down a little more uh, optionality around kind of how the model is interacted with, and that's the agent. Okay, cool. So end, also pretty self-explanatory. Everything has to have an end. <laughs> uh, a note uh, is really just a way to kind of help stay organized a little bit better. And so we can take and drag this 
Oh my goodness, can I drag this? I find this extremely hard. Uh, let's see if we select, can we drag it? Okay, um, so we'll just say, give, uh, give this some labeling so we can understand what's going on because as these workflows get more complicated, this is just gonna get harder and harder. Cool, um, next down here in terms of tooling, we can say, okay, I wanna give my agent access to file search, right? I want to say I have a vector store like a Pinecone database, I can have my agent call the file search to pull up information that's stored in a vector database like Pinecone or something. Pretty cool. Uh, if you don't have this already, you can create this inside OpenAI directly. So you don't have to use Pinecone anymore. You can use this all in OpenAI. And I'm gonna take a break here just because I think at a meta level, I was talking to another founder today and they were like, I don't really worry about OpenAI coming and doing what we're doing. I was like, you're crazy. Because <laughs> with, this, with this release, OpenAI, is decimating huge companies like N8N, like Pinecone, and they're just gonna keep doing this. So if you think that your little software company is safe from you know, OpenAI and Anthropic, think again, because I think they're coming for basically everything. And you can either adapt or you can fight it. Fighting it probably is not a good idea, okay? I digress. You can build vector storage for like RAG lookup right inside OpenAI now. So you don't have to use an external tool. Pretty cool. RAG and vector database, a way to store large amounts of information in a way that you can easily pull all the bits uh, a little easier. File search, so the agent can have access to file search. That's cool. Guardrails, this is a new one. I haven't seen this in any other platform yet. So guardrails is like, hey, is the thing that was just input from the start, uh, is it safe? So we can like run the, from the start through the guardrails uh, and then only if it passes, pass it to the agent. That's pretty cool. So in the guardrails, we can say uh, the input is the input from the start, right? So this is like a name or an ID or something like that. Uh, is this personally identi identifiable information? We don't want to pass that to a model maybe. That's cool. Uh, moderation, is this content, you know, sexual hate, harassment, self-harm? Okay, like, yeah, we would probably turn that on. I don't want to do that. Jailbreak, is this going to try to like do things to the model or to my AI system that like I don't want it to? Malicious intent kind of stuff. I'm going to turn that on because I don't want that to happen. Uh, hallucination. I think this is interesting. Detect and flag hallucinations by verifying claims against trusted documents in your vector store. Pretty interesting, right? This is like a confidence mode. Um, so I'll leave that one off for now and then continue on error. This is a huge thing with things like NIDN is like if it errors, it's just silent and you don't really know. Uh, so I'll leave that one off. Uh, so what I've done here is we have my agent can call like a, a vector database here. That's pretty cool. Uh, it has guardrails to where the input, if it's malicious, gets just trashed. But if it passes those guardrail tests, it will pass it on to the agent. It will pass that input on to the agent. That's cool. Okay, uh, now we can talk about MCP. MCP, Model Context Protocol, had a video all about this. Uh, OpenAI has native MCP integrations for like these handfuls of things. These are the same ones you would see inside ChatGPT. Uh, these are custom integrations that OpenAI has done. Uh, and to be honest, they're kind of mid, as the kids would say. To me, they're kind of mid. I, I spent a lot of time building, I think, pretty advanced you know, uh, workflows and integrations here, and I just couldn't do much, right? Like you can't send email here from the Gmail one. You can't create calendar events from the calendar one. You can't create docs in the Google Drive one. And so I'm kind of like, like, let's say one of the ones I was looking at is I want to make a podcast research agent. So you'd put a name in, it would go out to the internet, find a whole bunch of stuff, and then give me a document so I'm ready to do a podcast interview. I couldn't really do that because all you can do is retrieve information. I can't go create information. So we're talking about restrictions, limitations of the agent builder platform as of today. That's definitely one of them. Um, so MCP, like if you wanted to say like, hey, read through my email, you could do that. Hey, look at my calendar, you could do that. Hey, look through my Google Drive to um, to go like search for things, it could do that. It has access to Zapier, Shopify, all these places. So like MCP to me, and you can do like uh, custom MCP and, and integrations here, which is like, if I really wanted to make this work, I would just build my own MCP server. Uh, and use this, but I'm not doing that because this came out like three hours ago, <laughs> okay? Um, so MCP, not super helpful to me right now in this kind of 
incarnation of the agent builder platform. So we're just gonna leave this one off because I just don't think it's that helpful. Cool, uh, if else statements, kind of the, the backbone, right, of this. So if this thing happens, keep going. If not, maybe end or take it back to a loop or something like that, cool. And I'm gonna show you a whole workflow that I built earlier uh, while. So while a thing is true, keep doing. You know, these are kind of classic programming things. Uh, this is uh, kind of human in the loop stuff, right? User approval prepare an output and then show it to the user to see if they want to continue or not. Uh, and if not, then kill it. If so, then proceed with whatever the thing is, like create a doc or send an email or whatever. So you might put the user approval right here. And then if it's approved, continue to the end. That's cool. Um, transform, you can transform data like from one state to another. So maybe you have to take and transform like an email and you have to encode it or something like that. Uh, and they have documentation here about the different types of variables and comparisons and operators that they would expect. And then you can like set a state here, which is uh, to assign a value, like a default value to something. Cool, okay, so I'm gonna delete these two. So this is just kind of a walkthrough. We're not gonna run any of this because this doesn't really do anything right now. But I go back to the one I built, the podcast researcher. I'm gonna run into a limitation that I've seen uh, from this so far, which is if I go to preview here, and I'm gonna test the workflow and I'll enter my name. So it's passing the guardrail test and I get an error. And this is really unfortunate. I almost didn't make this video because I can't really show you this tool because it's just erroring out. And admittedly, like I run a software company, I know what it's like to have a big release and have issues with it. So I don't absolutely don't hold anything against the OpenAI team. But as of the recording of this video, which is Monday, October 6th, I'm literally recording this the day this went live. It's just not working. So I can't show you the output here. They have some really great videos <laughs> in, in the documentation and in the release, but I can't show you what this does because it's just not working. But my workflow here is pretty simple. It would take an input from the user. It would have guardrails. It would call an agent here. Uh, and the agent had a system prompt, say you're a helpful podcast research assistant. You know how to research interesting topics about a guest for my show. And the information is this, and it was gonna output it. And it was gonna, I uh, enabled web here. Uh, and it was gonna output it uh, as structured JSON with name, website, LinkedIn profile, and their bio. That would have been cool. And then what I wanted to do is have the agent then output this to an MCP server, which I was hoping was gonna be a Google Doc or an email or a calendar event, but it can't do any of those things. So, you know, I gotta be, I gotta be honest, like the limitations are such that this doesn't replace NADN, this doesn't replace Lindy um, as of today. Like, is it gonna happen? Yeah, <laughs> like probably. Uh, so so like, don't cancel your NADN or your Lindy account just yet because I think it's not quite ready. I wanna show you one more thing here is like, if you go to publish this, uh, these are this is how you can embed this, right? So you can use ChatKit. We talked about how ChatKit is kind of this Stripe-esque way to just embed uh, AI tools uh, and just copy this ID. And then if you go to the chat kit quick start, it has the documentation on how you can embed this or install it into a website or an app or something that you're using. So pretty cool. You can develop this uh, kind of in this canvas and then embed it once in your application or your website. And then you don't have to change the code of the website anytime you want to come back here and make a tweak to the system prompt or the model or anything like that. So pretty cool. So overall for me, uh, agent builder, fantastic. I love seeing OpenAI build more stuff directly into their ecosystem. I think that's the big win is to get all of the data in one place. That's definitely what they're trying to do. As of today, like, is it ready for prime time? No. Will it be by like the end of the week? You guarantee you it will be. So uh, I'll be covering everything that's coming out with AI news, research, and the latest tools, tips, and tricks for you. If you're not already, please consider subscribing to get new videos as soon as they drop.